your Royal Highness, Minister, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. As a 10-year-old, eager to explore mathematics, I rummaged in the popular mathematics section of my local public library and found a copy of a book called The Last Problem by E.T. Bell. I did not even have to open the book. On the bright yellow front cover, it told the story of the 1907 Volscale Prize offered for the solution of a famous mathematical problem. The problem itself was on the back cover. I was hooked. It was a wonderful find for me. Apparently, inside mathematics, there was hidden treasure. A little over 300 years previously, a Frenchman by the name of Pierre de Fermat had solved a beautiful sounding problem, but he had buried the proof, and now there was a prize for finding it. For Fermat had written in his copy of a Greek text on arithmetic, it is impossible on the other hand to divide a cube into two cubes, a fourth power into two fourth powers, or likewise any power higher than the fourth into two like powers. With this, truly, I have a wonderful proof, but this margin is too small to contain it. In my teenage years, I tried to master the kind of mathematics that Fermat had known in the belief that I could recapture his lost proof. I scoured Fermat's writings for clues. I learned what it was to do research. As I read more, I learned that the subject of modern number theory was also born with Fermat. It had grown alongside attempts to solve this problem. In the 19th century, the results of Kummer related to it became the backbone of algebraic number theory. Kummer made great progress on it, but he could not resolve it. However, people following those methods since Kummer's time had achieved very, very little in understanding the problem. The methods were simply not strong enough. By now, I had become a professional mathematician and part of the great communal enterprise of mathematics that is as old as recorded history. And looking with a professional eye at these early attempts, I awoke to the realization that Fermat had probably been mistaken. And in this awakening, I came also to the realization that working on the Fermat problem would be irresponsible. Then in 1985, starting with a novel idea, Gerhard Frey suggested a completely new approach to the problem, which was confirmed by Ken Ribbit a year later. Hearing this was electrifying for me. Fermat had re-entered mainstream mathematics. Suddenly it became possible to resume my quest. And this time, it was going to be the quest of a lifetime. Fermat did not leave any clues because he did not have a solution. But nature itself leaves clues. I just had to find them. There was never going to be a one-line proof. Nor do proofs come just because one has been born with mathematical perfect pitch. There is no such thing. One has to spend years, years mastering the problem so that it becomes second nature. Then, and only then, after years of preparation, is one its intuition so strong that the answer can come in a flash. These eureka moments are what a mathematician lives for, the burst of creativity that is all the more precious for the years of hard work that go into them. The moment in the morning of September 1994 when I resolved my last problem is a moment I will never forget. The first steps are critical, for one has to step off, set off in a direction 
There are many to choose from. But if the first steps are wrong, then you can never make progress. Fortunately, there are clues, correctly read, which can tell you that you are going in the right direction. And the most essential companion is faith, because you have to believe that there is a solution, and not just a solution in the abstract, but a solution that is accessible within your own lifetime. I could not have begun this journey without the help and generosity of my parents and teachers. My high school teacher who gave me a copy of a famous number theory text. Dominic Welsh who guided my undergraduate studies. And John Coates who guided my graduate studies. Of course, I depended too on the huge combined effort of the many mathematicians over the centuries who have built up modern mathematics as well as the smaller number that I was lucky enough to meet and learn from on the way. It is a pleasure to express my deep gratitude to the Norwegian Academy of Science and Letters and to the Arbel Committee for awarding me this prize. It is an unparalleled honor. And finally, I thank my wife and daughters who have helped me in my long struggle with this problem, and who I'm very happy to have here with me today to help celebrate this award.